has come today. Thank you very much. We're going to start on time. So thank you for being ready. Our first presentation is titled, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, MOOCs and KMOOC. And we have three uh, excellent presenters today. Hoon Jun Su is the Executive Director, KMOOC Planning Office, National Institute of Lifelong Education for the, in the Republic of Korea. Associate Professor Ong Jun Park is at Jetsu National University, also in the Republic of Korea. And Assistant Professor Jae Jun Chu is at Korea University, also in the Republic of Korea. Thank you to our three speakers for coming so far to help us out today and give us some very interesting information. So welcome, and you're welcome to begin. Thank you. Uh, it is my great, great honor to be here and present uh, some ideas and uh, introduce the KMOOC to all of you. Uh, while preparing for these presentations, I, I thought uh, some questions that I have to answer or that I have to be in search of uh, possible answers. So my presentation will be uh, first I'll give you the questions and then possible answers, not the answers all possible answers. So my first question is, uh, my title is Force Industrial Revolutions and MOOCs and KMOOCs. Actually, the main points of my presentation is the MOOCs is a possible future education platform. It can be served as a future education platform. So I do not praise MOOCs, but I am in charge of KMOOCs. Uh, while studying, researching the MOOCs, I have recognized the benefits of MOOCs. So today I'm going to share uh, my ideas and my opinions on uh, my experience with MOOCs. to consider is, what an era are we living now? In the morning, the professor Dokun Kwak mentioned the, the fourth industrial revolutions. Uh, the fourth industrial revolution is, can be defined as building on the third, i.e. the digital revolutions that has been occurring since the middle of the last centuries. So nowadays we have heard many times, such as artificial intelligence, drone, and internet of things, something like that. So it means, and also virtual reality and augmented reality. So it means it is a little bit difficult to like, uh, clarify where we, are, where we belong to the reality or virtual reality. So, the first in industrial revolution is characterized by a fusion of technologies that is blo blurring the lines between the physical, digital, and biological spheres. So a couple of days ago, my wife brought uh, the VR instruments for my daughters. And then I download from the Google website, so like a, a pictures, and motion pictures, something like that, and then I installed on my iPhone, and then I wear, I wore the glasses, something like that. It's this kind of box, paper box, and I put my phones in it, and then play it, and I can see, oh, where am I? Oh, I'm in Texas, Grand Canyon, and then uh, uh, 360 degrees, like a side, moving. So at the time, I thought, oh, where, where am I? 
or in the reality or virtual realities. So I feel I felt kind of confusing. So that is the characteristics of the fourth industrial revolution era, I think. And how is the landscape in landmark market demands changing? Actually, as the graph shows, the non-routine interpersonal and non-routine analytical skills demands are increasing now. And then also what skills do learners need to be equipped with? According to the Klaus Schubert on in, in his article, New Visions for Education, Unlocking the Potential of Technology, he mentioned foundational three, three, three areas, foundational, foundational literacy and competences and character uh, qualities. Actually, he stressed competences and character qualities. So I explain a little bit more about two aspects here. And nowadays, many people uh, said, today's uh, career tracks is, kind of, is not a ladder. So like a lower level to the upper level. But nowadays, it's kind of gym like a jungle gym. So it's kind of, you develop some kind of competence and skills here, and then you move to another, another, and then you build like this. It's kind of Lego style. So during this era, people skill, it means, in other words, interpersonal skills, or people say the soft skills is very, are getting more important. So soft, soft skill means interact effectively and harmonious with other people. Because nowadays, many social phenomena and projects have, I think, a complicated characteristics. So uh, a person alone cannot solve the problem. So we need to cooperate with our uh, friends or colleagues. So in order to do uh, it constructively, we need kind of communication skills, negotiation skills, and collaboration skills. For example, uh, since last, uh, last year, January, I have worked with Tai Gu, the professor on China. Oh, let's, uh, we, we agree, uh, let's, let's develop the new courses on data science together. So it means it needs from me communication skills and negotiations. You need to deal with some complicated problems in developing, designing and developing new courses on data science. So Professor Armstrong and I, I have to negotiate some issues. And then our project is, in nature, collaborative. So otherwise, we can go on uh, our project. So nowadays, the keywords of this Korean track is soft skill, interpersonal skill. So, in order to improve or cultivate that soft skills, I think the future education has the following goals, needs to have following goals. First one is cultivate creative talents, and second one is learning on demands, and third is competence-based learning, and the last one is building open education environment. And this one, I, I want to skip it. So, in order to have some kind of soft skills, interpersonal skills, I think, and also uh, in order to achieve the future education, MOOC can be an uh, answer, possible solution to that, those questions. Because uh, according to the professor Jin Yok Im, is a professor at Postec in Korea. He mentioned 
uh, seven points. MOOC provides just-in-time learning. Just-in-time learning means breakdown of topics, themes, thereby facilitating learners' learning at once. So if you want to learn, if you study something, topic or theme, you can log on to the MOOCs and you can study. And learn from the specific topic or week's content. And the second is uh, MOOC can provide a personalized learning. So nowadays, many people say, many people say the learner's needs is important. So MOOC can provide like a, uh, can provide a contents tailored into the learner's needs. The third one is self-paced. You cannot study, learn anything always. You have to work. Or sometimes you need to rest. For, for me, almost uh, I woke up at about 5 a.m. and I leave my home at about 6 a.m. for my office and then arrive at about 8 a.m. and I start work. And I finish my work around 7 p.m. And then I get back to my home and arrive at about 10 p.m. at night. So, how can I study? How can, how can I study? How can I research on some things? I cannot enter the university because uh, usually the Korean companies, they don't allow to full-time full student job, student work. So, MOOC, of course, it, it, it is an online course. So I can log on. Whenever I have time, I can log on to and then study and learn something from it. So, the MOOC provides a self-paced self, self learning. Whenever I want, I can learn from it. And also, MOOC can be uh, adaptive in nature. I think the adaptive uh, is kind of connected with the personalized learnings. So adaptive means provide educational consulting according to learners' levels. For example, I recently I have very uh, I have an interest in uh, biological evolution theories, and I I read a lot, but still I have no orientations towards that. So my level is low. I can choose the courses on the MOOC platforms. For example, EDX and Coursera in KMOOC, they have uh, lots of courses on biology, something like that. So I can choose which one is suit for me. So MOOC can be an adaptive platform. And of course, nowadays in Korea, the flipped learning is kind of phenomenon popular. So first, b before the class, the instructors, they ask the students to study first on online. And then when they come to the class, the pro instructors then, uh, they, they give some project or discussion topics to the students, and then they talk. So for example, uh, the professor Jin Yeok Rim, he mentioned the like, a result of flipped learning. In offline learnings, the student satisfaction, uh, satisfaction, uh, sat sat satisfaction scores around 3.8 uh, per uh, total 4.5, still high in, in offline courses evaluations. But when he asked the students to do some flipped learning and he utilized flipped learning, the students' sat satisfaction scores up. 4.3. So I, uh, last year I was so, so surprised. Is it possible? And he said, yes. Because already students already learn some important topics, important contents of the course, and then they can come to the class, and then they can do some in-depth uh, discussions. Thereby, they can learn more about the topics like that. And then MOOCs is a global. 
So learners from diverse backgrounds, they can get together, and then they learn something, and then they also communicate and exchange information, knowledge, and their opinions together. So that it means that kind of things. And also MOOC can provide a master, mastery. It means almost every learner learn over 90% of the, what the course requires. Like uh, normally, MOOCs consist of like uh, motion pictures, and the quiz, and discussion forums, and assignments, project assignments. So if you fail to pass the, on, a, on a certain level of the test, you, ha you have to repeat it. So you, your knowledge can be like a, uh, perfect, maybe, through the rep repetitive learning. So MOOCs can be a solution to future education. So now, uh, let, let's look at the second instance of MOOC. The first one is MOOC is accessible to virtually everybody who has access to the internet and the courses are free. So massive MOOC is a brief of abbreviated uh, words of massive open <coughs> online courses. So massive is lots of people. Usually, according to the time of over 200 uh, learners registered on the course. It can be uh, classified as a massive course. Um, the learning occurs at times and locations that best suit the participants. And third, I, I think this is a very important point. MOOC, uh, learners on MOOC platform, they interact with each other and also interact with instructors. So thereby, thereby, they can learn about knowledge and also get some information from among, among them. And also gain insight into attitudes, ideas, and trends among different populations and countries on a particular topic. Uh, as I mentioned before, the MOOC learners have diverse backgrounds in terms of race, uh, gender, and status, social status, something like that. So they can, if they interact on the platforms, they learn from each other. And also MOOC uh, can allow learning and development to be tailored to the needs and or interests of each participants. As I mentioned before, MOOC can provide uh, adaptive, personalized learning to the learners. And also, uh, MOOC is open and widen learning possibilities. So it means lifelong learning. MOOC can uh, serve as a lifelong learning platform. The last one is MOOC is non-exclusive. MOOC discriminate the learners. Like because of your, you are like a lower income are you from lower income family? MOOC doesn't discriminate them. But on, in offline universities, you cannot enter. Or once you register the uni offline universities, you have to pay some tuition fees. For example, in Korea, usually I think uh, one semester, for example, Korea University, I think over uh, $5,000 per semester, so for one year, you have to pay $10,000, US dollars. So if I were a lower income family, like uh, if I 
earn like $35,000 a year, I can offer to my children uh, tuition fees. You know, in Korea, uh, normally if you, if you cannot uh, enter so like a best, higher like a best university with higher reputations, you cannot get a good job. <laughs> but move through move you can learn without anything, without no 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 with no fee. So that is uh, those are the significance of move. And this is a it's kind of a timeline of moves. So just just look at that you can understand the like trends of and development of major uh, MOOC in the world. So, 2012 is the MOOC year, uh, the New York Times mentioned. And as of uh, around April 19th, 2017, uh, in, the, in the global level, around uh, 58 million learners in the world. And also 700 plus universities they provide MOOC contents on like MOOC platform. And also 6,850 courses is operating on the MOOC. And now uh, turn to the Y MOOC. Yes. YK MOOC. So I introduced some backgrounds for uh, introduction, introduction of KMOOCs. First, declining revenue for higher education institute, institutions due to the decreasing number of students caused by low births in South Korea. Now I think 1.2 uh, person, the low birth rate is 1.2 or quite low. So it causes uh, lots of problems for the higher education institution's revenue. And also, also uh, socially increasing demands for new and diverse courses. Also, the demands for quality higher education. Uh, this year, the QS rankings, uh, one university in Korea, they manipulate their score. So the QS uh, institutions, they delete their rankings from the list. So why? Why do they do? Because of like the school's reputations are very important. So they try to like uh, raise their rankings on the QS ranking or Times ranking, something like that. And also uh, there are, there are there is increasing social demands for quality and lifelong learning. If nowadays, you know, the cycle of life cycle of knowledge is around 3.6 years, according to one study in Korea. So if you enter the graduate school and you finish your PhD in five years, your knowledge or information you have is just gone, useless. So you need some kind of like a continuous learning is needed. And this is the goals and strategies of key moves. The policy goals is innovation in college education through access to best quality lectures and offering higher education opportunities to more learners and form your foundations for lifelong learning on higher education. So that's the goal. So, in 2015, October 14th, we started 27 contents, book courses, provided by 10 leading book leading universities. Quite small courses, quite small member participating universities. But uh, now almost less than two years. What happened? Yes. The status of King service use as of 17th uh, June 2017, 
number of visitors, 3 million, 277, something like that. And the members, membership is uh, 164,000. And course regist registration number is uh, 281,000. And also, the MOOC contents, year, year 2015, we have only 27 courses. And last year, we developed 116 new contents. So as, as of last December, we have 143 courses on our platform. So at the end of this year, we have over 302, 320 courses. And also, as uh, Professor Dokkun Bak mentioned in the morning, the, the KMO belongs to the National Power, power Services for Moon Jae-in government. So maybe next year, from next year, we get more funds from the government. Actually, uh, next year, we are around $8 uh, million, dollars, US dollars. We, we get $8, $8 million dollars from the government. And then we can provide more funds to the participating in And also, uh, this year, we introduced some new features to our MOOC platforms. One of the most important features is MOOC Insight. Through the MOOC Insight, we can provide some information, Im important information to the participating universities. That is, uh, learners' uh, behavior data. So on the basis of learning on analytics, on the analytics, the participating universities and instructors, they can improve their courses. So that is the most important features added this year. This is kind of like the book inside the example. And this is kind of the KBOX learners profiles. Uh, according to pie graph, uh, around over 29% of MOOC learners are from, actually not universities, but the age groups uh, of 20, 20s, around 29, almost 30% of learners accountable for 30% of total uh, MOOC learners. And this is uh, age groups and genders. So I think almost uh, every uh, age groups, they register the MOOC course and then they learn something from the MOOC courses. And also 38% of the learners are from the here, uh, university uh, graduate. And this is kind of like the satisfaction survey results. So here the last one is, uh, uh, from last year we uh, applied the net promote scores. So around 47.6 they recommend the MOOC courses again to other people. And finally, this is uh, for uh, fiscal year 27 to 2017 20, strategic directions of KMUC. But the first one is develop more high quality courses in various subjects. Especially we started to focus on the fourth industrial evolution uh, field, such as AI and IoT and data science. And secondly, enhance course quality and administrative management. So this year we develop, we have developed the kind of guideline for developing and operating MOOC courses. And third one is uh, expanding course usage in higher education. So we promote, we ask the universities, participating universities, uh, utilize more chemical courses, more. And also, if possible, we ask the universities to revise their School university regulations to give some credits to the KMO courses. Okay. And then finally, 
uh, we try to stabilize our services. And this is a kind of future issues for development of K-Moves. Uh, we need to develop the business model. And also we need to uh, active MOOC based international co corporations. And also uh, establish the ground grounds for constructing a sustainable K-Move ecosystem. So from next year on, we have a constructive relationship with the industry and enterprises. Thereby, uh, we have we, we can give more like uh, good quality courses to the lifelong learner. So this is kind of our future issues. And at the end of this year, we I think we get some result, visual result of these issues. Thank you. Said, um, I'd like to connect it to that. 
That's interesting because I think, okay, I'm not Thai, but it seems to me that Thailand has a male dominant culture as well. Mm -hmm. But in all my, I teach bachelor of business, I teach MBA, I also teach master in communication arts in mm -hmm. Chula. And in all my classes, it's mostly female. So for, for bachelor classes, it's maybe 60, 70% female, 30% male. In my master classes in Chula, it's like 10 female to two male. And in my MBA classes, it's like, gee, four male to 20, 20, 21 female. So that it's quite interesting uh, to point to that, that Howard pointed that out. I don't know if Howard has the same thing in Chula. Similar. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Well, so anyway, 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 yeah. So maybe younger age, you mean that most females are more tending to they, toward they, the education, but they, they the age is different. Maybe. Mm -hmm. no, but but, but in, in his case, even with the younger generation, it was about half and half, right? Well, that, that slide, you know, yeah. we had that slide, and we went mm -hmm. back to that slide. Again, the younger were more half and half, but, yeah. it, but it definitely skewed more to be heavily male. And as the population ages, I wonder if that's Maybe, uh, I think, uh, around from three years ago, three years since uh, the Korean population, what is called baby boomer, they have had many difficulties in finding their alternative jobs after retirement. Mm -hmm. So I think they, they, more, they are more aggressively, actively find searching for like courses, on online courses. Interesting. Okay. No, no, I, I but then, like, uh, the ratio of gender. gender. So I, I don't know if this might be a way to help market your platform. Because, OK, this is what I noticed, at least with the, well, I don't know in other types of universities, but say Chula Lumpur and Assumption University, especially the master's courses. One reason, I, it seems, why we have such a huge um, enrollment of females is because it's a fashion statement. It's cool for a girl to say, I'm taking my MBA. It's fashionable. It looks good on their Instagram. You know, they take a photo, a selfie with the background of their um, university symbol in the background. And it's, it's Actually, cool. Actually, uh, the yeah. national pension system for yeah. uh, around the 50s and 60s are very weak in Korea. Uh, around 55, 53, they have to retire from the comp work workforce or company. So they have to find some alternatives. But, you know, the society has changed very fast. So in order to catch up a little bit, so they have to find, so they can easily find some online companies from such as the YouTube and our team platform. I, think, I, I guess. So uh, until now, we focused on like the higher education contents. But from next next year, we focus on we target more on uh, the job seekers. Vocational, not the university students more on emphasis will be given to more on the job seekers, especially between the age between uh, like 40s, 50s something. Because the National Assembly, they ask us to change our uh, directions of our program from next year. So maybe next year you have a more interesting later from, from us. Uh, how do you guys apply in the formal uh, pedagogy? Do you design the courses or do you need that? Oh, you any, like, we do not give any like a categorical pedagogy to the participating uni universities. But you don't have like a theory of change, like what is it, what is learning? I'm sorry? Like what is learning? What is learning? Yeah, don't, like is there no process, no structure on how the content should be Oh, we, we have the, the guidelines. It's yeah. kind of manuals for developing and operating the MOOCs, of course. So we do not uh, like affect influence yeah. the professor instructor's way of like uh, 
their own like a patterns. We, we do not influence, but just like a basic information and guidelines for how to make, how to make and develop, how to design the MOOC. It's kind of like a, it's a manual, not just they, they, they just refer concern with our manuals. We do not we request them. We just they, they concern our manual or guidelines, mm -hmm. and then they develop they, themselves. We respect their uh, their own. Uh, so in the manual, in the manual like what is one, two, three most important things that you guys think? Oh, it's first uh, is the stick to the, like kind of MOOC spirit, MOOC uh, philosophy. So interactions is very important. And also, uh, we try to ask and uh, ask the universities to improve your courses uh, every year on the basis of some hard data, thereby like satisfying their uh, learners. More. And have you guys applied any like? I know Coursera is using the machine learning systems uh, to enhance their model. Have you guys started to do that? Yes, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, this year we introduced the Kim uh, MOOC Insight. So we provide uh, like not actually low fire, but we have we will give like a filter some data to the participating universities. Yeah. 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 My name is Eun Jung Park. Uh, I'm an associate professor uh, of uh, uh, tourism management department at Jeju National University. I think Dr. Sir already gave lots of information uh, for your better understanding on the background of KMOOC at the national level. Uh, but in my presentation, I will more narrow down to the regional level because I'm uh, in the uh, you know, regional national university. So, well, actually, I'm not sure whether I'm the right person 
to uh, make this presentation because I'm not directly technically involved in the system development. But uh, what I can say is I'm one of the professor who willing to offer courses through the MOOC system. So uh, in that sense, I will briefly you know, summarize the progress and strategy um, in developing the MOOC service for Jeju National University. Okay, this is the contents. Well, some of you might be aware of uh, Jeju uh, Island. Have you heard about island name? Yeah. So for some of you who might not be aware of uh, the island, I will briefly talk, uh, tell you the location of our uh, university. It's located in the city area, Jeju city area. It takes about 30 minutes from the international airport, and it's on the way to the National Hala National uh, Mountain Park. So it's one of the uh, UNESCO uh, designated uh, world natural heritage. So, uh, yep. And the next slide is about vision and goal. Basically, our long-term vision uh, in developing the system, the MOOC system, is to foster creative human resources, which means the students uh, through providing multidisciplinary open uh, courses. The goal is to, basically our goal is to uh, make uh, more than 20% of faculty and students to engage in the system by 2020. The next slide is the structure. Basically, uh, the MOOC system at Jeju National University is mainly managed and supported by the e-learning center. It's a, uh, it, uh, our uh, e-learning center is the uh, regional, um, the only regional e-learning center at uh, Jeju, in Jeju. Well, uh, the next slide is briefly show the progress that we have been gone through. Uh, we started online, we, uh, we offered online uh, courses from 1998 and, 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 and also it's one of the selected as the so I can read. developing more MOOC courses. Uh, as I mentioned, we have 25 courses, and uh, within the three years, we are thinking to, uh, thinking to develop eight more courses, MOOC courses. Okay, the next slides are about, slide is about strategy that we have uh, for the MOOC service. First of all, we thinking to build the foundation currently uh, through providing, uh, through uh, operating some learning communities among students and faculty. And also we are thinking to revise the university policy to give more incentives to students and faculty. The next strategy is course development. Uh, 
Well, actually, there are three uh, very specialized topics in Jeju Island because it's an island surrounded by ocean. So ocean cleanliness and tourism is the main specialized topics. So we are thinking to uh, more develop courses about these three topics. The next uh, strategy is to uh, build up ecosystem for the MOOC service. Uh, through providing some uh, courses to bridge uh, Jeju University and local industries and the local residents. The next slide is more detail of our, our detailed information about the step. Uh, currently, as I mentioned, we are providing 25 courses and we are thinking to develop more localized authentic, authentic uh, class topics such as uh, um, ocean, cleanliness, and tourism. And I'm in the, div uh, I'm in the tourism division. <laughs> so maybe uh, if it is possible, I'm thinking to open uh, some tourism related course, MOOC course, maybe next year. And then currently, we are providing MOOC classes to the student of College of Future uh, uh, Convergence. And uh, we uh, give some credits for the students who are taking the classes. The next step is to, uh, to uh, uh, Next step is to uh, have more requirements for the new faculty who join in our university. Uh, for instance, uh, they need to practice flipped learning courses and utilize a MOOC system, our own MOOC system, and, and also uh, there will be some incentives for their promotion. Uh, yeah, and currently there are about 3,000 students from 29 universities who are actually taking uh, courses and uh, some uh, acquire credit. The next step is globalization. Uh, as I mentioned, we are thinking to make more than 20% of student and faculty uh, to involve you know, uh, in the system. And uh, all departments should provide at least one MOOC course. And also, uh, uh, we are thinking to uh, provide more classes to international exchange students. Uh, these are the uh, MOOC courses we are thinking to develop now. Currently, uh, we have 25 courses, but uh, except for the 25 courses, we are thinking to develop these uh, more classes. As you can see, some of the topics are pretty much specialized in Jeju area. Uh, the two courses, the title of the courses are Jeju Henya. You had a uh, Henya means the woman divers in the island. So we are thinking to uh, develop more courses about Jeju Henya because Henya is one of the uh, cultural heritage designated by UNESCO. So uh, there will be more courses about Henya. And also we are thinking to uh, provide some courses about exile culture uh, on Jeju. And then the rest of them are uh, the possible you know, potential courses we are thinking to uh, design. And as I mentioned, we established the MOOC system, MOOC platform last year. And uh, well, it's not an uh, English version, but uh, we are thinking to uh, have another section for, you know, for English. But anyway, there's a, a button the green button, once you click the button, the students click the, uh, the green button, they can log into the MOOC, uh, the MOOC uh, page. So the next slide shows the uh, courses currently offering. There are 25 uh, courses and there are some side menus to uh, manage you know, the website for the students. Yeah, this is all about our uh, uh, MOOC service. Uh, well, actually, uh, we have not done much things, but we are thinking to have a more 
you know, deliver more courses and uh, engage in more programs and projects. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, we just started. And uh, as I showed, there are uh, 25 courses. It's uh, free. Every part, everybody can uh, access. And uh, yeah, once they register the website. Some of the courses are available on Teams? I don't think so. It's a very, uh, um, some of the courses are only offered through our uh, platform, not through the KMOOC. Yeah, of course, we are thinking. Mm -hmm. This year is we just we just participated, so yeah. it's a kind of beginning stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very new course. About twenty five minutes for each 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 uh, the video clip is a 25 minutes, about 25 minutes, but uh, it's a it's a just one uh, uh, one lecture. It's not kind of a, a, a semester course. You mean all of these are individual courses? Yeah, so you select one, it's 25 minutes. 25 minutes per course. Yes, sure. So it's more of a lecture, of course. Yes, lecture. So we are thinking to develop, uh, yeah, as he mentioned, some uh, connected you know, courses which can students you know, take and, uh, and have some credit you know, for taking the courses. Mm -hmm. uh, have you guys thought about, is it mostly Korean? Right? Yeah, it's mostly well, uh, as I mentioned, I'm one of the faculty who are willing to you know, start a MOOC you know, course. So maybe I, I will be the first uh, uh, instructor, with the uh, first professor who will, uh, who will uh, I mean, deliver an you know, English course. So yeah, it's on the planning stage. Uh, almost every course of uh, KMOOC has English subtitles. Uh, mm -hmm. But we, uh, so we did our research on this, uh, and we found that people learning in second language mm -hmm. find it much more difficult yeah. because you have to learn vocabulary, the mm -hmm. subject matter at the same time. So it's harder to focus, it's harder to engage, and it's harder to retain them, right? So if, if you actually want to capture a non Korean speaking, mm -hmm. speak. Mm -hmm. speak so yeah, you, you are right. It's one of the issues we need to think about because the language is very important uh, from the perspective of the learners. So if, we will, if I deliver lecture in English, maybe for the Korean student, it's not comfortable. It's not a, a, a you know, best language to learn. The Korean is the best language for them. But for the international learners, definitely we, do, we need to provide an English course. So it's a kind of dilemma. So these five minute courses are they divided into smaller clips or is it one clip or two five minutes? Just one clip. And I like what kind of intention rates do they have? How many people actually sit there for twenty five minutes and watch the whole thing? Well, uh, I'm not the person who can give you the correct answer for that kind of technical <laughs> issues, but well uh, as I uh, told you there are about 3,000 students who are already, you know, watching these videos. So, yeah, it's more and more students. But how many of them watching mm -hmm. all the way to complete it? Uh, I'll give you an example. If there is a <laughs> plan, if the video is more than seven minutes long, mm -hmm. about half of the people that are probably Yes. Yeah. But maybe we should try to give you the data. I'm not actually. I'm not a representative of the e-learning center. Uh, I'm the I'm more the technical person. So anyway, you know, there are more students who can watch this mm -hmm. you know, and learn the services. So anyway, it's you know, it's kind of the even at the regional level. Okay, very, very interesting. Thank you very much.
Jaehoon Chu from Korea University, Republic of Korea. Thank you very much. I'm not uh, uh, majoring in this kind of uh, e-learning or this kind of educational related uh, yeah, subjects. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to briefly introduce uh, some status in the uh, Korea University about this kind of e-learning kind of sy yeah, systems. And also, uh, we are currently building some uh, data, data science related uh, MOOC courses in collaboration with the professor, uh, yeah, uh, 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 Dr. Uh, uh, Hun So. Okay, so uh, let me start with this uh, a brief intro about the uh, fourth uh, indo industrial revolution. And uh, let's focus on the, uh, the last one, which is uh, uh, the current era. Uh, so yeah, people call this uh, fourth industrial revolution as a cyber physical systems. And the main keyword um, yeah, mentioned in this uh, topic is uh, driverless cars, smart robotics, and materials that are lighter and tougher and the manufacturing process built around 3D printing. Um, but the, in terms of those keywords uh, around this uh, fourth uh, industrial revolution uh, can be uh, composed of these four parts, uh, mainly uh, related to these uh, technical fields. The first one is uh, Internet of Things, and the uh, second is uh, Cloud uh, Computing, and the third is uh, Big Data and uh, Artificial Intelligence, and the last one is uh, Mobility. So in detail, IoT is uh, focusing on, yeah, in terms of its uh, curriculum that uh, uh, people, can, uh, people can learn. Uh, IoT contains those embedded systems uh, uh, such as uh, Raspberry Pi, Pi and those kind of programming uh, related to these uh, embedded systems and uh, low power uh, yeah, systems. And the cloud computing, yeah, is, uh, yeah, so if you're familiar with the Dropbox or these kind of file sharing system, and this, uh, rep this is a representative example of this uh, cloud computing. Uh, focusing on uh, maintaining the file system, but also it's uh, uh, involving this uh, kind of a virtualization, including these uh, Docker or other uh, types of a vo virtual system where uh, you can uh, utilize maybe uh, other uh, uh, operating systems on a heterogeneous systems, in, like using a Linux on top of the Windows systems and so on. So they, uh, this kind of thing uh, helps and uh, accelerates the process of propagating a particular technologies to other uh, very heterogeneous environments. And the third one, uh, which uh, I'm uh, mainly focusing on personally, is about this kind of big, big data and uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, actually, we are building uh, the KMOOC uh, contents uh, related to this course. So I'm the one of the um, instructor, uh, and uh, uh, we have two other faculty members from our own university. And this, uh, this course uh, will be scheduled to open up uh, in maybe November, uh, se yeah, September to November. And uh, um, we are uh, composing our courses uh, from the two, uh, mainly two, the two perspectives, of, uh, which is uh, from the um, fun uh, fundamentals, uh, which uh, yeah, uh, is mainly about the mathematical and uh, uh, background yeah, materials, uh, including uh, uh, probability and statistics and linear algebra and uh, optimization theory. And also uh, yeah, related to main uh, uh, contents about this uh, big data and artificial intelligence, yeah, we uh, yeah, uh, plan to add uh, uh, some general contents about the machine learning and also the deep learning. And in the future, uh, we will uh, uh, vertically uh, focus on a particular areas of these uh, techniques, such as computer vision and uh, natural language processing and other uh, yeah, uh, emerging uh, uh, applications. And lastly, the mobile, yeah, mobility is about uh, like mobile programming where uh, we can build uh, various kind, kinds of apps on top, yeah, in, yeah, on top of this uh, iOS and uh, Android uh, systems. And uh, yeah, let me uh, briefly introduce uh, the current state of, uh, uh, about this uh, e-learning and this kind of uh, MOOC-related uh, courses uh, available in the, our own university, of uh, Korea University. So since 2007, uh, we opened up uh, uh, something called OCW, which uh, currently contains 276 courses. And uh, is, uh, uh, recently we joined also uh, uh, this kind of consortium called the Open Courseware Consortium. And uh, this, yeah, uh, if you can go, if you go to this uh, URL, and then uh, you will see the, the websites and the available courses. Although it's in, uh, mostly written in Korean, but uh, we plan to, like, yeah, make it uh, international uh, by uh, providing uh, uh, English uh, contents as well. And uh, 
since 2015, uh, we uh, are also contributing to KMOOC uh, ecosystem. And uh, currently, from our uh, faculty members from our university, uh, we offer uh, six different courses in mainly two different areas of uh, humanities and social sciences, and also science and engineering fields. So those courses, uh, uh, yeah, the example of these courses is uh, in, yeah, Introduction to the Civil Law and the Classical Literature, Histor uh, yeah, History and Culture, and Shakespeare uh, Literature. And then in the STEM or this kind of science and technology field, uh, we provide this uh, general relativity theory uh, so that the, the public or non-experts can un yeah, easily understand. And also another uh, quite complicated topic of uh, quantum mechanics and so on. Okay, and uh, uh, in 2017, uh, we uh, are currently adding uh, six more courses. And also one of them is about this uh, data science. And those courses will be these uh, introduction to the socio sociology and the request of the education in Korea and modern uh, Korean poet and uh, physics for uh, everybody and the mathematical fundamentals for data science and also machine learning for these data sciences. And so as you can see, those courses are yeah, um, yeah, uh, targeting for uh, more broader audiences uh, where uh, kind of a little background uh, is available for those people. And uh, yeah, also we are participating in other uh, common platforms uh, um, uh, offered by this uh, Apple, uh, which is called uh, iTunes U. So since 2013, uh, we are offering three courses in this platform. And uh, since, uh, after 2016, we, uh, we are providing eight, eight courses also in the another platform called uh, Blackboard.com, uh, which is a uh, yeah, recently popular uh, element system. And uh, yeah, uh, our university has recently changed our LMS uh, platform or the um, internal uh, lecture management system to this, uh, uh, yeah, uh, this system called the black.com. Okay, and uh, these are yeah, some interesting keywords that our university is uh, focusing on, uh, especially in, uh, in terms of this uh, e-learning um, kind of pla platforms. So the keyword, uh, the first keyword is uh, control, which is con composed of uh, uh, contents and teaching and learning, and rule, which is uh, like a, we are yeah following a specific uh, disciplines and also yeah open to more uh, wider uh, public audiences and also this kind of uh, well designed uh, yeah supported by this uh, well designed LMS system, and also course uh, resources um, yeah so we are yeah using this uh, keyword of uh, most simple, which is an acronym for uh, merge and open and sharing those technology. And also in terms of the contents that uh, we want to show uh, and give an insight and motivation. Uh, and also uh, our uh, courses, we want our courses to be a uh, platform independent for learners and uh, education. So educators, so that uh, this kind of uh, um, <coughs> learning curve uh, don't need to be a uh, yeah don't need uh, yeah don't need to be a bottleneck uh, necessarily for both of these uh, learner and uh, educational side. Yeah, I think that's it uh, for my presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, do we have some questions? Yeah, I have a general question for um, Doctor um, Doctor Hyun and maybe the other two who represent the, the university. Which is that Dr. Hyun mentioned that um, the universities are starting to earn less income, right? Because of the aging population. Did you mention that? Right? Well, and, this year? No. Well, I, I don't know. Um, but but the, the, the trend is that universities are starting to have um, less income potential yeah. because of an aging population. Yeah. And then now we also have these MOOCs providing free education. So are you encountering any resistance resistance from the universities who are saying, oh, we're not earning enough money, and now we're, we want us to put it all for free. We're going to earn even less money. So do you encounter this kind of resistance? And uh, how do you address that concern by the, by the university? Well, uh, currently, it's a free. Everybody uh, can freely access to the Perspective. When we have some partnership with industry or uh, 
case from the course at Korea University. The title of that course uh, here, the biological human is that course provided by the professor of medicine at Korea University. The completion rate is over 24%. Uh, the course is for general public, not uh, solely for uh, university students. So you, 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 just, you just get general public, they are not uh, specialized in the biological something. But still, they finish, more, uh, tw over 20% of general public, they finish their course compared to like uh, other courses. A average uh, completion rate of KMOOC is about 10%, 10 to 11%, quite higher than other global leading uh, platforms. As far as I know, the Coursera and EDX, maybe around six to seven, something like that. But still, the KMOOC is high, high, higher than the global reading moves, but that course, biological humans, 24%. 
but, but really, yeah. I think Howard's question and his question was um, based on the length of one yes. single video. Same, yes. Yeah. That course is the video usually uh, around plus minus 25 minutes. But I asked the professors of that course. He actually he doesn't care the length of course the videos. Rather, he focused on the interaction between him and learners. He do not employ the TA. In fact, he answered directly himself to the learners. And he lead some discussions. Kindly answered every question himself by himself. So learners they feel, oh, oh my instructor answers me directly. But usually other courses they employ TA. We, we provide around uh, ten uh, ten thousand dollars to the TA operation fees. But the professor that course, he himself operating the course. So he he think, oh that is one of the important like a contributing factor for like a uh, high higher level of completion rate. And also, he has this kind of like a, this kind of technique. He used the kind of like a sto storytelling method. So, general public they feel, oh, biology, oh, it's difficult, hard for me to understand. So he introduced like a daily stories, something like that, and then he like a delves into like a more deeper levels. So learners they can easily follow his courses, something like that. So at the end of this coming August, he will present his case in a Korean e-learning conference in Seoul. So that's some quite interesting case, actually. We have a study on this, and we found that if you create individual quizzes, so it's basically the attention span, right? In seven minutes, if you need presentation, you need to change the pace. You need, so uh, if you create some form of engagement that gives the break break, mm -hmm. you can usually do longer videos. So uh, what we're doing, uh, have you seen like if you watch a YouTube video, they stop the video and you do a commercial. And uh, you can deploy the same technology and instead of showing people commercials, you can give them some action interactivity. Yeah. So this is what we're doing is we're recreating the classroom experience and the professor is giving a lecture and he's stopping and asking the classroom a question related to the lecture that they're giving. Uh, and that has worked out very well. Okay. If, and if I may add, I can only speak for my YouTube videos. Um, what I do is I have both for the same topic, I have like a three minute overview and then I have a longer um, 10 minute, 15 minute um, should I say it more in depth on the same topic? And in a way, both of these videos are competing with each other, but then I end up getting both the top one and number two spots for the particular topic. And definitely, if my uh, my three minute, should I say, it's not three minute teaser, that's the wrong word for it, the three minute overview is, is, is a better uh, word for it. I definitely get a much, much higher completion rate. I didn't, I never computed the average for all of them, but much higher completion rate and much higher share rate. So by virality, and we talk about virality or people sharing. And then than the um, than the longer videos. So I use the the short videos to hook them and to create virality and to bring in uh, should I say subscribers and mass. So I have about eighty five thousand subscribers on YouTube now. And then um, and then some of them will move on to the deeper videos and then some of them later on will move on to my website and pay my, uh, my premium membership fees. That's why I was asking, that's why I was interested in the monetization factor um, with, with, your, with your course. And I also have a question about the good course is uh, when it comes to uh, credit opposition, student might want to finish mm -hmm. the course, otherwise they cannot pay for the credit. Actually, for example, the Ihua Women's University, they provide around uh, six courses on our book platforms. Uh, actually, those courses for 
the Ego Women's University students, women. So population weight, 100%. Uh, <laughs> now for interesting, the general public, they, they do not, uh, strangely, they do not prefer to uh, register the Ego Women's University courses. But now it's everything, uh, I mean, it's, everything is free, so that's why people don't have an expectation about uh, free courses, about when they pay for the uh, course and they need to pay the exam and they need to pay the credit, the competition will be increased. Yeah, so there should be some benefit uh, at the same time because it should have some incentives to offer more students officially to register to the course. Okay, do we have any other comments or questions? Okay, I'd like to thank our first three presenters. Okay, we have a scheduled refreshment break uh, until 2.45. We'll be back in about 15 minutes. And let's uh, go ahead and get started. We have three uh, very interesting presentations for the second half this afternoon. So let's start with a topic uh, particularly interesting to me as a uh, business professor, and that is you too are a business person. Lessons from Chalamacorn University School e-learning system. Uh, I learned a lot about this just a few months ago, and I was very fascinated, and I think uh, you will be as well, particularly if you're not a business uh, person to start with. So our speaker is uh, Ajahn Kritini Pong Tanalur. She is at Chalalcorn University, and she is the director of Digital Learning Center. So welcome, and welcome to the beginning. Thank you very much, Robert. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, would you allow me to sit a little bit here? Because I'm not sure about the pointer and all technical stuff. Thank you. Uh, I think from the presentation before the break, we generally see the MOOC system as a whole university level. But what my presentation is about, the one faculty, one business school that just started to do something about online courses. And of course, as a business person perspective, we aim to make money from that. So let's see how it will, I, th I hope it will answer David's question. And by the way, when you mentioned about the students of MBA, most of them are girls. And I think the purpose, of course, is about you know, working status, but another hidden agenda from my experience here is because they're looking for boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> and, but the sad thing is when they enter here, and we try to promote that as well, you, know, you have many opportunities in work and in lives, okay, and they, we let them interpret that on their own, but when they come, they found that only 30% are boys and they already have girlfriends, so, so poor of them. But anyway, that's another our strategy. So let's start. I may, I'm not sure whether you know our university or not, so let me briefly introduce a little bit. Jilongkong University is the first university in Thailand almost 100 years ago. We now have 24 faculty colleges and we have 40,000 students. For CBS Jilongkong Business School, we are the first business school in Thailand. It's around 60 years ago. And we have 5,000 students. We are one of the largest faculty, next from Faculty of Engineering in Jilongkong mm -hmm. University. Mm -hmm. So this is the president, mm -hmm. university president mission. What is the top mm -hmm. skills and knowledge Jilongkong University students require?